Okay, so you might be thinking, Tony, didn't you already do a retro review of Power Rangers already? And you would be right, but that one was for the Sega Game Gear. Being the pop culture phenomenon that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was back in the mid-90s, they were represented on multiple gaming platforms. While the Game Gear Edition was a fighting game, today I'll be reviewing the Nintendo Game Boy Edition, which was a platformer. You start the game by choosing your favorite ranger. They all basically control exactly the same, except for Kimberly the Pink Power Ranger, whose weapon attack is a ranged attack, whereas all the others swing their melee weapons. Seems they had to keep the game small because they're missing the Green Ranger and his Dragonzord, a big omission considering how popular he became. You make your way through stages defeating waves of putty patrollers and avoiding traps. Really, this just felt like an exercise in memorizing enemy and trap patterns. There certainly were some tricky bits, but since you had unlimited lives, you could just keep trying again and again. Once you reached the end of a level, it was time to form the Megazord and fight the stage boss. This also felt formulaic, since the boss rarely varied up their attack patterns. It seems that this edition is the only game that you actually get to fight Squat, Babu, and even Rita herself. So, points for being a bit unique in that regard. Once you beat the boss, there's a bonus stage where you have to destroy 30 projectiles without being killed by them. This felt pointless because there were no rewards at the end of it. It just seemed like busy work or something to pad out your score. The game was short. I beat it in 30 minutes on normal mode, so of course, I gave it a go on hard afterwards. It lived up to its name, although it's mainly because there were more waves of putties and traps. Plus, it seemed the bosses had more HP. Now, usually, I just record an hour of gameplay for these retro reviews, and I felt like I could have beat the game on hard if I didn't have to stop. A pretty easy and quick game that's not very deep, the gameplay gets a 5 out of 10. Well, we are talking about realistic proportions on the Game Boy here, so this isn't going to be pretty. The character select images get the point across, but boy are they ugly. When you select a ranger, they do get their unique helmet design in an image, but the actual sprite is just a reuse with varying shades of grays. The Zord and Megazord images for the combination sequence look fine, probably because their designs are nice and simplistic compared to human faces. But the Megazord spray, while it worked, I kept wondering why it looked like it had a mohawk and not its signature triple horns. Turns out, they're there, but the sprite box was so limiting that it made it hard to see. The putties looked fine, but the bosses felt like garbled messes trying to fit in too much detail. This game could have really benefited from a different art direction, using stylized cartoon sprites and images instead of trying to be realistic. As it is now, this game gets a 3 out of 10. Like I said in the Game Gear review of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, we have to listen to the iconic theme song. Clearly more lo-fi comparatively, but I'll argue that this is what works in this edition's favor. The best parts of the song are crisp and strongly hit the ear, whereas the Game Gears was muted and lacked emphasis, trying to do too much. The rest of the tracks? Not bad, actually. They work really well for their stages and keep you engaged, which is a good thing, because you're going to need something to keep your sanity trying to get through those stage 3, 4, and 5 traps again and again and again. Sound effects were okay, but nothing spectacular. In fact, I would say there was lots of room for improvement on the Game Boy hardware. We've heard better on older games. The music and sound of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the Game Boy is a 7 out of 10. Even though there were a bunch of Power Ranger games back in the day, I oddly only ever owned the Game Boy version. So this was my chief source of Power Rangers video gaming. I know that playing it now felt really easy, but back then, it was a proper level of difficulty for young Tony. I put some decent reps into the game, and it felt good to beat it back then. Did I finish it on hard mode at all? I can't really remember. The nostalgia hit of Power Rangers on the Game Boy gets a 6 out of 10. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the Game Boy was never meant to wow you, but instead give kids who own the console a crack at the franchise. Pretty fun if you stuck it out through the basic gameplay, but even then you don't need a lot of patience. The game is very quick to complete for a more seasoned gamer, so that's why I would recommend trying it if you were a fan of the show. 